AWS Security Hub gives you a prioritized view of your security alerts and security posture across your AWS accounts. With Security Hub, you now have a single place that aggregates, organizes, and prioritizes your security alerts or findings from multiple AWS services, as well as from AWS partner solutions. Security Hub continuously monitors your environment using automated security checks based on the AWS security best practices and industry standards that your organization follows. In this demo, we'll be going over how to work with security standards and controls in order to manage and improve your security posture. We'll show you how to enable the AWS Foundational Security Best Practices Standard. Then we'll go over how to understand your security score, how to prioritize security controls, and finally, we'll show you how to investigate and remediate field checks. Let's get started with enabling AWS Foundational Security Best Practices Standard. Security Hub recommends that you enable the Foundational Security Best Practices Standard in all accounts and regions. This standard checks whether your accounts and resources follow security best practices. It does so by running automated security checks. The controls within this standard are defined by AWS security experts, and this curated set of controls helps improve your security posture in AWS and covers the most popular and foundational AWS services. I'm here in the AWS Security Hub console. In this case, it's the first time I'm enabling Security Hub. Before we enable the service, I want to highlight one key prerequisite, which is to enable AWS config and to turn on configuration recording. Security Hub uses AWS config rules as its primary mechanism to evaluate the configuration of AWS resources. Once you've enabled AWS config and turned on configuration recording, head back over here and select Go to Security Hub. When we first enable Security Hub, you can see that there are three security standards you can choose to enable. I'll leave the default standard selected. As soon as I enable Security Hub, those security standards will become enabled and begin conducting security checks. As we enable Security Hub, we're taken to the summary page in the console. We can see that the security standards are currently being enabled. We'll go over to the security standards page. Security Hub will take some time to complete the first run of security checks for each standard. While this is taking place, you will notice that the score is being updated to reflect the latest findings from the security checks. I've just shown you how to enable the AWS Foundational Security Best Practices Standards for the first time if you didn't already have Security Hub enabled. However, you can always enable and disable standards after enabling Security Hub you can do so directly from the Security Standards page. To do so, just select Enable for the standard you wish to start using. Now that we've enabled the Foundational Security Best Practices Standards, let's talk about how we determine your security score. First, let's head over to the Foundational Security Best Practices page. From here, you can see that your security score is 73%. The security score is calculated as the number of past controls divided by the number of enabled controls. But notice that this excludes controls without data. What that means is the current score of 73 was a result of taking 37 past controls and dividing by 52 controls, but excluding the one that has no data. So that would be 37 past controls divided by 51 controls, which is 73. Now, let me discuss why you would have controls that have a status of no data. One of the reasons is if you just enabled the standard for the first time. At this point, Security Hub has just begun conducting security checks for the controls. If a control does not yet have security check findings, then it will have a status of no data. Once security checks are conducted for the control, its status will change to reflect the status of the checks. For example, you'll see the control show up as failed or passed, depending on whether the security checks failed or passed. 
Let's see another reason why you might have a control with a status of no data. In this example, you'll notice the status of the control is no data. And that's because either there are no findings or because you've suppressed all of the findings. So here, you can see that there were two findings, but both of them were suppressed. As a result, the status of this control is no data. I'm going to show you what happens if you change the workflow status to something other than suppressed. As you can see, the status of the control is now failed, and that's because at least one security check failed. You'll also notice that the status excludes suppressed findings, which is why when all of the findings are suppressed, the status is no data. Let's talk about the impact that this has on your score. As you can see, now we don't have any controls with a status of no data. We also notice that the score dropped from 73 to 71, and that's because now the calculation is 37 past controls divided by the 52 enabled controls, which is 71%. Another useful breakdown is the breakdown of all of the checks. Here, you can see that 11% of the checks failed. If you want more details, when you hover, you'll notice that you can see 279 checks were conducted in total, and you'll see the breakdown of which ones failed by their severity of the control. Now that we've discussed your security score, let's talk about how you might start improving your score by prioritizing security controls. The most straightforward way to prioritize what you should be working to remediate first is to work from top to bottom on this list of security controls. The reason this is a good strategy for improving your security score is that this table is sorted to show failed controls first. Then it's sorted by default to show the highest severity failed control first. And finally, it's ordered by the number of ch checks that actually failed. Because of this, you'll always see the highest severity control with the most failed checks show up first on the list. Starting from top to bottom is a good way to make sure that you remediate the most critical things first, and especially the ones that have the most failed checks. This view shows you all controls, but you can also go to the Failed tab if you want to focus only on the failed controls. From here, you can use the table filters to narrow this down even further. For example, I can use the filters to narrow down the list of failed controls to those that reference IAM. Now that we've decided which controls we want to focus on to begin improving our score, let's go over how we might investigate and remediate the failed security checks. I'm going to show you the details for control IAM.5. This control checks whether multi-factor authentication is enabled for all IAM users that use a console password. You'll notice that we failed all four checks, and there are different IAM users that failed the check. Now let's figure out how we can fi fix the issue. Use the remediation instructions link to see instructions for remediating the issue. Here are the remediation instructions for this control. We're going to go to the IAM console and find the IAM user that failed the check. Then we're going to use the security credential section and we're going to update the assigned MFA device option by choosing manage. I'm going to show you a shortcut within Security Hub that will let you go directly to the details of the resource. In my list of checks, notice that the resource names are clickable. I'm going to select the Security Analyst user. As you can see, the resource name here is a link. Selecting this link will take me directly to the specific resource detail page within the IAM console. Now I'm in the IAM console, and I'm looking at the user Security Analyst. I'm going to follow the instructions we just read, which is to go to the security credential section. Here, I'm going to choose Managed under Assigned MFA Device. And from there, make sure I assign one of the multi-factor authentication options. 
For the purpose of this demo, I won't continue with the process, but you should be getting a good idea of how you would remediate failed security checks. In order to pass the security control, we're going to have to pass all of the checks. This means we'll repeat the remediation steps for each of these resources by making sure that multi-factor authentication is enabled. I do want to point out that this quick shortcut to the resource details will only appear if you have permissions to view the resource details, which is the case if you're logged into the account where the resource resides. Because Security Hub lets you consolidate findings from many accounts, you'll notice that in some cases, the resource name is not a link. And in these cases, we'll let you know that the resource is in a different account. I'd like to show you one more example of how you might investigate a failed security control. Let's look at EC2.6, which checks that VPC flow logging should be enabled. We've already seen that you can go directly to the resource details using the quick shortcut, as long as you're logged into the account where that resource resides. If you want to dig deeper into why the security check failed, there are two other links you may find useful. If you select the icon under the Investigate column, you'll see a link to the AWS Config configuration timeline for this resource, and another link to the config rule that is used to evaluate this control. You can use these links, for example, to see a timeline of changes to the configuration of this VPC, which might help you understand what change caused this check to fail and when it took place. If you're interested in learning more about Security Hub's features, such as integrations with other AWS or third-party services, or how you can automate custom actions, then please visit aws.amazon.com security-hub for more details.